Well, let me tell you the story, the story of tack knives. Tack knives, now I ran into them, their product a couple of years ago and never really thought much more of it. But here's the knife and here's the stuff I got a couple of years ago. I got this in a partial trade with a guy and he sent me this knife and I can't remember who the hell it was now. Does this actually have a model number? Any? No, nah, hell no, okay. Of course not. But I got this, OTF, and I thought, wow. Um, and I think it was D2, it's supposed to be D2. Does it even say that on, no it doesn't, okay. But I think at the time I looked it up and I figured out this is almost a hundred dollar knife, you know, not bad. And it's big, it's big, like 4.2 inch blade, it's 10 inches overall, whatever. So it's a big knife and I thought, that's way cool. And somehow I think I had gone because I wanted to look it up and I went on to Tack Knives and then I signed up to get their promotional emails or something, whatever. And so I used to just continue to get those and never really pay much attention. Also, you know, I'd get emails from Grindworks and others that carry other types of automatics and OTFs, okay? So, and I think before Grindworks was Grindworks, they were something else, and that's where I got some knives before, years ago. I mean, like five years ago, four years ago, something like that. So, recently, uh, I saw something from Tack Knives that came through in a promotional email, and... I thought, you know what, I'm going to go check them out because I was kind of in this OTF thing going on and there's my Heretic Cleric, Cleric 2, whatever it's called, with Magna Cut, etc., etc. And of course, I had spent uh, $420 on this this crazy knife, okay? so And I, at the time, I didn't even realize this was part of the, I mean, he's the son of Microtech you know, Marfioni. So, I mean, um, there's that. Now, um, and how I got into the, these particular OTFs with tack knives is only because I saw some big folding knives and I saw a picture that they sent of a couple of knives. Number one is this one called the Hatchet. Okay, this is tack knives. And it was... You know, it's nine and a quarter inches long, overall length, D2. I mean, nothing fancy about the way they printed the D2 emblem on here. And definitely the pocket clip does not turn me on, which I'm going to look to see if one of my Civivi or maybe Kaiser, you know what I'm saying, can be, can be substituted for this or if I can find another because there's a lot of deep carries that are one one screw on top of the other so i'm gonna look to see if i can get a different clip but this knife and by the way this knife as well uh and so and then i had looked on aliexpress and saw this is a nemo knife fat dragon nemo knife okay as well okay so how did it end up as a tack knife and so obviously it's one of those ones that you can rebrand in your own name if you just order enough of them, whatever. And I thought, this is in, these guys are in Miami. So that's a two hour drive from my house, right? And so I go, wow. And I ordered these and it was like two days later, they showed up in the mail and they're big, big. But I thought for $39.99, it's worth a shot. And, you know, are they any good? I'm going to do a video on them, okay? So that's a whole separate thing. I wanted to just kind of do an overview of TAC knives, who they are, kind of where they're headed as well. Because these are a couple of OT not OTFs, and these are in their Pro Series now, okay? So these are Pro Series knives, which is different than their standard lineup of knives. And look at this. I mean, uh, these are 154CM blades. Okay, nice satin grind. 
Uh, these feel pretty good in the hand. I'm not so good with this Band-Aid on here, so I'll do it with this. And really, I mean, you're going to go, how much play? Because that's kind of the first thing that pops into your head. This has got about the exact same amount of play as the Microtech, Ultratech, and or this one, my Heretic. Yeah, I mean, almost the exact same amount. So they're tight. They're pretty tight, okay? Uh, these are about as tight as you can get and still have the mechanicals that you got because these OTFs that run on these slide things, they got to have a little bit. But no, these are really tight and they're 154 cm. And so here's the deal. I read they're about their them page because they got a bunch of knives on there that don't look quite this high class, okay, on their site. And so I read their About Us page because I thought that was interesting. And I'm going to, you know, give it to you so you can kind of uh, pause and screenshot it if you want. But they were founded in 2014. They started going to the Houston flea market. You know, you go to the flea markets, people got tables of gas station knives that they sell, right? 20 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever. And they go, yeah, gas station knives. Blue collar guys, buy them, didn't want to spend more than $20, et cetera, et cetera, and this kind of thing. So, I mean, this is, and then they started getting um, requests for OTFs, and then they go, yeah, and they were pretty terrible, pretty terrible. Um, and so they started searching, like, who makes a decent OTF that's affordable, but respectable you know and they're still looking but they're they they have different plates places manufacturers that make the knives and of course uh, they assemble them in Miami and the, the the deal about that is when you make them overseas either in China or Taiwan or wherever you're made, having them made but when you do that um you, you got to assemble them here because, you, I mean, you can buy like uh, a Max Ace Medusa or, you know, whatever, that Vespa Ripper, you know, those things off of AliExpress and they'll ship it to you and they're assembled and stuff. But if you're going to buy hundreds at one time, yeah, that's the problem. Because I remember hearing that White Mountain Knives, yeah, but they didn't want to have to do the assembly, so they didn't want to get a bunch of Max Ace Medusas or something. I can't remember but uh, exactly what the deal was. But So I understand why they're assembling them here in the United States. They're just getting the parts in, which is legal. It'll get through customs, and then you can do the assembly here. So, yes, and it does give you a bit of control QC-wise if you're in assembling them in-house, you know. So you're getting the parts, and guess what? Guess what? This will be amazing as well to you because it was somewhat amazing to me. And let me see. Okay, so this is about the Hornet, which is what this is. This is the Nighthawk. This is the Hornet. Okay, so here's the Hornet, right? Okay, so this is a smaller knife. This is three. This is two and three quarter inch blade, seven inches overall length. Okay, next page, and what hits right here? Manufacturing partner, Best Tech. Best Tech is making these knives. Okay, uh, so they're assembling them in Miami, but all these parts are being made by Best Tech. Well, does Best Tech have 154C? I mean, is this real stuff? Yeah. And and Best Tech could, does a good job making knives? Oh, yeah. So I'm going, okay. So these guys, um, you know, they're not just throwing stuff out there. They're, they're actually looking for a quality manufacturer to make some of this stuff. So I thought, wow, I get a Best Tech made OTF? How unique is that? Um, so this is, and this gives you a little bit more information on it, whatever. Okay. But, and I do have a discount code, by the way. So if you're interested, 
Look at the discounted discount code. I think they said it's going to be Love Them Knives. See L U V T H E M K N I V E S for ten percent off. The shipping is free, but they do charge tax. Okay, so I looked back on my order on those on those knives that I have ordered so far, and uh, yeah, I did pay tax, but I didn't pay shipping. So this is the Nighthawk and. On this one, this is interesting, okay, because more paper under, but I just want to make a point here uh, because this would be important if you're if you're looking for a certain size knife. Here they say this one overall length is 8.2 inches and 3.4 inch blade, okay, on the Nighthawk. It's 159 bucks, so take 10% off of that when you got 144 or something like that, okay all in okay but let's put the actual and we're going to throw my tape measure on here so let's put the tape measure on it and that is not 3.4 inch blade it's 3.6 inch blade okay so this is not quite three and three quarter inch but i mean when i open this knife up i go there's no way that's 3.39 inch blade and 8.2 overall length. It just looks bigger than that. And sure enough, it's 3.6 inch blade at 93 millimeters. And overall, it's 8.6 inches overall length at almost 22 centimeters. Okay. So be aware if you order this, it's a bigger knife than what they're saying. And I questioned them on that, and they said, you know what? Those are the specs from Best Tech. So uh, I imagine they'll correct it going forward. Another thing here is you don't have a specialty hardware on here, like, you know, those triangular things that uh, Microtech has, and you got to get a special, you know, bit drive or whatever. But this, these are number eight screws in here. Okay, and it's not on the side here. The actuator is here like it is on my Heretic, right? It's on the front. Um, pretty easy, and they did some improvements on here. And so when you go to uh, just take my link or just type in TAC Knives, it doesn't matter. I'm not an affiliate or anything, but you can take my link below, click on it. Go to TAC Knives uh, website, and you can... Uh, check out this one because um, the Nighthawk has been changed a little bit from the first version to the second version. So there have been some little modifications uh, made. And I think really for, for the money, uh, we're getting pretty acceptable then. If I'm getting an OTF that goes in and out like this this is that's pretty pretty nice and of course 154 cm steel what's the most current what's the most current otf that just came out was that a kershaw one and i can't remember what the steel was but they're getting boku money aren't they it was a kershaw i'm thinking of but you know so you know, mostly we're seeing, what, 300? I mean, you go to Microtech, anything on Microtech, and you go to Hogue, you go to SOG, you go to Benchmade. Um, so, I mean, I'm not saying this is necessarily in their class because those are known names. Does that mean their knife is any better? I don't know about that. I mean, that's the question, isn't it? But... Uh, this one, I mean, I've <laughs> I've had a ton of Microtex in my hand, and I own this one. I I bought that Dessert Warrior thing for almost the Ultratech for about five hundred dollars, and I'm going, wow. Um, what was it? It was four hundred and sixty something dollars with tax and everything, but these seem pretty straight up. I mean, it'd be nice if they offered them in blue or 
purple or green or something like that, but black is the only color I've seen so far. But I mean, they're saying that their goal is to eventually get the equipment and machinery and everything and make these in the USA. So this is, by the way, once again, they're Pro Series knives, okay? So they have other knives, a bunch of other knives that are not Pro Series. I don't know about those knives. I've never handled those knives. And I don't know if they're all aluminum or if they're that aluminum zinc alloy that's real heavy. I don't like those types of OTFs. And I don't care if they're less expensive. I just don't want one, you know. I want one that has got this aluminum body like a Microtech or like a, you know, like a Benchmade, Infidel, or whatever. Aluminum body that's light and lively, has got good action and decent blade steel. And of course, they're here in Miami, so they have a warranty as well on these knives. So uh, there's that, right? And so then here's the little guy with some kind of a little carbon fiber inlay on here, front and back. Okay. The Hornet, it's got a different feel to it. And look at, there's a screw right there where there's not a screw. So this obviously is mounted from the inside. Well, it goes, you know, inside in there. Here, for some reason, it's right on the outside there. And these look to be number sixes, not number eights. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's just a little sub three inch blade of 154 CM. But the pocket clips, they work just fine. See how they are? They're kind of like the kind of pocket clip I like. The ones that they come up, but then they flatten out right here at the end. But you can get the lip of your pocket through there real easy but it still holds onto your pocket pretty strong. Um, the only thing is they're not, you know, left and right hand where I was going to see. Yeah, I mean, like on this one, of course, you can flip this one back and forth. And there's some that go over the top and the little thing on the top screws down onto the pocket clip. So you can undo that. You could just pick up the whole clip, move it the other side and go, but that's not the way these are set up. But they come in a box, and they're very close by to me, so the shipping was super quick. Uh, but I imagine it'd only be another day or two if you're in California or whatever for shipping. But nice hard box on the Hornet. The Nighthawk came in this zipper pouch. Okay, and so there's this. I didn't, there was no extra hardware or anything like that necessarily. So, no, but I mean, it's a nice pouch. And there was no box. There was no box with this. This was in this pouch. Um, and then these are stickers here that I got from them that came in the box. But you can read up on their warranty information as well. What do you think? I mean, I don't know if any of you guys had these Pro Series knives from TAC Knives. And the fact that they've got folders and they got EDC gear, like, uh, you know, those Coubertin type of key, key change, you know, that you can also use for self-defense. And then they've got uh, all kinds of stuff like titanium pry bars and different types of EDC gear on their site as well. But it looks like their main push is automatics. And it looks like of the automatics, the main focus is, OT is OTFs, okay? Out the front type knives. So we got the Hornet. We got the Nighthawk, okay? And... Oh, yeah, Hornet goes here. Nighthawk goes here. But you know what started me off was the folders, because I like big folding knives. 
And this is the hatchet, but this is also a copy of a Fat Dragon Nemo knife, which of course it looks like as a as a seller, if you contact the factory that makes those, they'll put your logo on them if you want to order however many hundred, you know. And yeah, I like this. I, I think these are way cool knives. I was really skeptical at $39.99. Look at that full length, you know, backspacer, uh, G10, D2 blades. Um, but you know what? I haven't taken them apart yet, and I'm going to do a video on these, and we'll find out. We'll look closer but really initially you know fit and finish and that kind of thing they seem pretty damn good look at the hardware kind of a machine screw look i don't dig the pocket clip there's no question about that but you know traction here there's texturing uh they even you know bothered just do a little sculpting around the this and you got entry both ways in case it's not a captured pivot i don't know but they're a flipper you can finger flick them uh so these are interesting in that way too and they have other styles they're called the chameleon series check that out isn't that wild I just thought for $39.99, I would take a shot at them. And then when I posted it, I also made contact with TAC Knives and because uh, they saw my posting. And so then we got to messaging back and forth. And yeah, I'm always interested in affordable automatics. You know, sometimes I think some of them are just overpriced um in the way i'm looking at them because 350 400 dollars 500 dollars just seems like a lot of money for an aluminum handle with a moderate blade in it you know and so these closer to 150 all in and they are actually assembled here but they're made by a good oem manufacturer uh okay i'm i'm up for that and this, knowing that this is not 3.39, that this is a 3.6 inch blade, this is big enough. This is fine for me. I, I like the longer OTFs. I mean, you're in the 3.6 inch range, three and a half and up. I'm, I'm with you on that one. This one, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll warm up to this because this is, you know, very compact, very discreet, under three inches, but still not too shabby, huh? So this is my kind of introduction. I'm going to get into more individual. I'll probably do an individual video on each one of these and a disassembly, okay? And then we'll cut a little bit of paper and whatever, although most of these are piercing and that kind of thing orientation but we will do a disassembly and a little bit more in-depth look at these and then i'm gonna take a, a closer look at these knives this chameleon series of knives that they offer uh and see what's going on with these are i mean for 39.99 i knew i couldn't get hurt i mean and it was worth a look to me. And you know what? I'm glad I bought them because I like them. I think they're way ass 39 bucks plus. Okay. All right. I'll cut you loose. But I just wanted to let you know. Go to their site if you want. Check it out if you're into OTFs or automatics. Can't speak to the non-pro series. Okay. I can only speak to the pro series. And then also to the chameleon series of folding knives i think they're way cool as well uh and actually where did i see i saw i saw one of these knives on their site as well 
And I couldn't believe it because I didn't, yeah, but they do. And this is like a 7.3 inch overall, whatever. And I looked at the specs and sure enough, they they got that too. So um, they, they might have some interesting folding knives and for no more than they cost and you got USA shipping, it might be worth a shot as well. I'll leave you alone now. We do. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.